welcome everybody to this uh, cold winter's morning uh, in Toronto. Uh, welcome to this workshop on contemporary expressions of sacred legitimacy and their political implications, both from me, uh, Simon Coleman, and Valentina Napolitano. And you'll be meeting other people who are working for uh, the project uh, at, at other points throughout the day uh, as well. And with that, we just leave um, to the first intervention. Welcome, everyone, to this first uh, workshop of the conference, Sovereignty, Sanctities, Contemporary Expressions of Sacred and, Leg and Legitimacy and Their Political Implications. Our first speaker is Jane Svenjusen, Professor of Systematic Theology at Lund University in Sweden. Her recent publication includes the book Divining History, Problems, Messianism, and the Development of the Spirit, and Jewish Thought, Utopia and Revolution, and Monument and Memory. She is currently the principal investigator of research on spiritual and aesthetic experience. I would invite her now to present her talk entitled On the Need of Thinking Beyond the Religious Secular Divide, Reflections from the Most Secular Country in the World. Please welcome Dr. Svenjusen. Contrary to what liberal debaters are often willing to admit or even able to see, many of the norms and values championed even by moderate parties are not just liberal or universal, but rather the products of a historical process through which Protestant Christianity has merged with Enlightenment rationality or rationalism. While it is true that the Church of Sweden, which was formally uh, separated from the state only in the year 2000, has lost its position as a dominant social institution, it is therefore important to recognize the extent to which a secularized Protestantism still exerts its influence on the majority's view on private and public, individual and collective, uh, rational, and uh, rational and irrational, and so on and so forth. It is precisely this cultural, cultural amalgam which explains why some Lutheran ministers were prepared to close ranks with atheist critics of religion against what they perceived or conceived as less desirable uh, religious beliefs and practices. Now, to return uh, to the overarching topic of this workshop, the point I wish to make in connection to these examples from my Swedish context is that political claims to sacred legitimacy often cut across the traditional distinction between religious and secular spheres. While we may primarily think of religious groupings or individuals as the subjects making such claims, we also need to recognize the extent to which secular agents, parties, presidents, today make claims to sacred legitimacy, be it in the form of the strategic investment in Christian symbols by national parties in contemporary Europe, um, and there would be many other examples uh, alongside Sweden, uh, or by the way, by way of the messianic undertones of Donald Trump's promises to make America great again. There is, however, a yet subtler, uh, yet a subtler level to which um, uh, I wanted to draw your attention with my examples from contemporary Sweden. Not only do secular, presumably secular agents, make claims to sacred legitimacy, we also need to see how claims to purportedly secular, neutral or universal values are sometimes claims to values which are in fact embedded in a particular religious tradition. Or to put it even more pointedly, how claims to sacred legitimacy today often come under the guise of secularism, especially in these cases from Sweden. These observations bring me back to my initial comments on whether it even makes sense to speak of politics as a swear that could and should be kept separate from religion. As already indicated, I think it is necessary and desirable to define politics as a distinct realm in the formal sense of upholding a secular state. That is not to say, however, that politics in a more general sense could or should be kept separate from questions of faith, 
religion, and theology. On the contrary, as Jürgen Habermas phrased it uh, in the early years of the new millennium, an advanced discussion of uh, the conditions of our liberal democratic states need to recognize the pre-political values which ultimately sustain them, values which can often be traced back to uh, our inherited religious and philosophical traditions. Now, if we agree that politics, to some degree, presupposes pre-political values, and that the great spiritual traditions represent inexhaustible sources of such values, then the key question becomes not how to keep religion and politics apart in a waterproof way, but rather how to relate politics to these pre-political sources in a constructive way.